In making predictions, it's the conditions of the planets or the grahas that determine what's going to happen. The reason astrologers struggle with predictions is because they're not analyzing the condition of the planet fully. The only textbook that gives the full analysis of how to analyze, you know, the full steps of analyzing a planet, this condition is Brihat Parashara or Shastra. And he does that in the Avashtas chapter. He also tells us in other chapters how to actually apply that condition to predicting the effects of a bhava and so on. But it's in the Avashtas chapter, which is that last chapter in volume one, that he tells us how to judge that all-important planetary condition. Without knowing the planetary condition, we can't determine if the planet's going to be a supportive, uh, productive influence, or whether the planet's going to be a disruptive, negating, and destroying influence. And without knowing that, how can you predict when something's going to happen, when a planet's going to make something happen for good or bad? You can't do it. Okay? And when, you, when we go through these steps here, these five steps, and you understand them, you'll see that there's a lot of things required to judge a planet. We can't just say, oh, it's exalted. Okay, good, it's exalted. What does that mean? Okay, it's one thing. It's not the whole picture. Um, so we have to judge it fully. And each planet has to be judged fully in each Varga chart. So sure, it might be exalted in the Rashi chart, but if you're talking about a person's love life, what, what's it doing in the Saptamsha chart? Okay, or if you're talking about them holding their marriage together, what's it doing in the Navamsha chart? Or if they're talking about their, you know, the great wealth they hope to achieve one day, what is it looking like in their Chattertamsha chart? You know, so every plant is going to be in different conditions in different Varga charts. And those all need to be analyzed, okay? The nice thing about Parashara is he gives the planetary conditions in ways that we can, in words that are familiar to us, that are very easy to understand. He examines the conditions of the planets in the very same way that we would examine a person. So imagine you just meet a person. What goes through your head? What do you think about? That's the very same thing that Parashara does with the planets. He treats them like humans. So, we need to examine a planet the very same way we would examine a person that we just met. So the first thing we would do when we see a person, what's the first thing we notice? Their age, right? Oh, it's a boy, he's one years old. Or, oh, they're 30 years old. Or, you know, gosh, they're, they can hard, they're breathing with oxygen and they have a cane and a walker and, and, you know, they can go like a half a mile per day is their maximum speed. They're so old. Or we say, well, they're a little past their prime, but they still look robust and healthy. You know, we look at people and we look at their age. And what does their age tell us? It shows their, how much of their potential they can utilize. A person that's in their fully mature state can just do more, right? They can push, work more hours, they've got more physical energy, they can do more. They're going to be most productive. A baby is not going to be very productive. It only, even a young child who's seven years old can only do a little bit. A teenager can do more, but an adult will do more. Then a person, once they've crossed middle age and their back starts hurting, they need a little more sleep, they're going to produce somewhat less. Then finally a person gets so old that they basically die, at which point they can't produce anything. The planets are that same way. They actually have an age of being an infant or older all the way till death. And that age determines how productive they're going to be. So that's one of the conditions we have to examine, is the age of the planet. And we have to examine the age of the planet and all of the Varga charts. Okay? Parashar gives us something called the Baladi Abhashtas, which are used to determine a planet's age. Okay? After we notice their age, which we just noticed, we start talking to them, communicating with them, and right away we'll notice are they excited, awake, and ready, and is their brains full of life, and are, is their consciousness animated? So you talk about astrology, are they like, yeah, I love astrology, and I learned this, and I learned this, and I learned this, and you have this really rapid, amazing conversation with an awake and ready person? Or if you go to the person and say, hey, you want to go um, kayaking down that really dangerous river, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm totally ready for that, I got my boat, I've been kayaking for 50 years, I'm totally know what I'm getting into, I'm awake and ready to go kayaking. Or do they say, oh, what, I got to sleep right now, wake class me in a week, 
Okay, at which point that person's useless to you. Or they're like, yeah, kayaking's cool, we can probably go, you know, let me go dig my boat out of the garage. They could be somewhere in between. Planets are the same way. They're either awake and ready to do something, they're totally unconscious and slumbering and not ready to do anything, or they're in between those two places. Okay? Parshar uses the Jagrat Adhyavashtas to see that, to see if the consciousness is awake and ready to do and produce, or slumbering and unable to do anything, or in between that. So, um, if you have an old person who's awake and ready, that may be more productive than a mature, strong, healthy person, robust person who's sleeping, right? If you need help with something, you're better off with an old person who's awake and ready to help you than a physically mature person who's sleeping, right? Same with the planet, okay? So we have to look at both these conditions. Now, then once you get talking to a person, you, you realize real quickly the person's level of happiness. They're already feeling really good about their lives, or they're feeling kind of drudgerous about their lives, or they're just feeling totally stressed out about their lives, okay? In either case, the planet can be productive. The person may be going, oh gosh, i got so much to do, my life is just falling apart, but hell yeah, let's go kayaking. And they go kayaking anyway. But along the whole way they're going, gosh, you know, the other day my boss told me this. And so it's not as nice as a kayaking trip, because that person is bringing so much stress with them. Or the person can be, having an ama they can be sitting in an amazing place and they're feeling really good about everything, and they're like, yeah, let's go kayaking, I'm awake and ready, and they're really positive, they don't have a negative attitude, they're more fun to be with. Okay? Or a person can be in a million places in between that. But that person is going to be feeling a certain way about their life. Now that feeling is not necessarily going to determine whether they go kayaking or make a great kayaking partner, symbolizing a planet that's productive in your life and produces something great. But it shows how much fun it is. So you have a planet that's given you a job, and that planet is awake, and it's strong, so it's giving you a great job. But if that planet is really stressed, while that planet's giving you this great job, you're still not feeling happy about your life. There's so much stress in your life, you're, you know, that it's no fun. Whereas if that planet is in a really strong place, according to this third type of condition, it could be a really happy, positive, optimistic, easy to be with, fun to be with planet. So the planet has a certain mood while it's being active in your life, while it's producing or destroying, it's in a certain mood, it has a mood about it, and that mood will affect your attitude while that event is happening, how you feel about the event happening. Yeah, my car exploded, yeah, I feel great, no big deal, or, you know, I lost my favorite deck of playing cards and I just feel miserable and I've been crying over it for months, you know? How we feel about an event is not necessarily relative to the event, okay? And so we have a separate type of condition to see how the planet's feeling while it's dishing out the event, which means how you're feeling while the event is getting dished out to you. And that's called the Deepthadi Avashtas. The Deepthadi Avashtas are the most common, usually used Avashta there is. Ironically, they're the least important when it comes to a concrete prediction. They're more coloration type of ashta. Okay, they color the, the mood of the planet. They don't affect what the planet's going to actually do. Okay? And they do represent the stress the, under which the planet is in while it does something. But again, stress is just stress. Something can be really stressful and really rewarding and successful. Or something can be non-stressful and not lead anywhere. So, this Diptati Vashtra, this third type of condition, lets us analyze the stress or ease under which the planet is making things happen. It's much nicer when things are happening in a solid, harmonious way versus a stressed way. But, things happen just as big under stressed ways, okay? But by themselves, those are not the most important Vashtra for predicting what a planet can do. It's just the stress under which a planet is doing whatever it is it's going to do. Okay? Then, a planet is never alone. So you meet that person, and they're like, yeah, you know, I'd like to go kayaking, but I don't have a boat. But, I have a friend who has a boat, and he's going to loan me the boat. Okay? 
So now you've got, the guy has a boat, because he has a friend. So friends can help out. Or you can say, yeah, I had a boat, but last night somebody broke into my garage and stole my boat. Well, this guy had an enemy take his boat, so he can't help you. The planets do the same thing. Some planets are friends to other planets, and some planets are enemies to other planets. The friends help their planets that they're friendly to, making that planet more productive in your chart. Enemies hurt planets that they're enemies to, making those planets less productive in your chart. So we have to analyze all the influences of all the other planets to that planet, including the influence of the Lord of the sign the planet's in. Because the planet will always be in the sign of a friend, enemy, or neutral, right? So basically, planets become more or less productive depending upon having more or less friends, just like in real life. If you have lots of friends, your life's going to be better. You've got help, you've got people sincerely helping you just to help you, and don't want anything from you. That's going to help you, right? But if you have lots of enemies who are doing everything they can to, you know, not have you succeed in your things, and instead they're making everything else happen, then you don't get the same type of success. The planets are exactly the same. They're, they have friends that can help them be more productive, and they have enemies that can hurt them to be more productive. And that we look at is the Lajitadi of Ashtas. Those are by far the most critical single component in astrology to learn. Without knowing the Lajitadi of Ashtas, Reading charts, reading character, reading behavior, and making concrete predictions are going to be a hundred times more difficult and way less accurate. But these Lajitadi Abhashtas have to be used in the context of the other Abhashtas. So say you have a friend and he wants to help you, but he's sleeping. You know, he's unconscious, he won't be able to help you. Or say you have a friend, he wants to help you, but he's so old, he only can help you a little bit. That's not as good as having a friend who wants to help you, who's really strong and healthy and can run over and help you all day long. So, we have to look at all the influences of the planets, friends and enemies, to it, but we also have to consider, are those friends and enemies awake and ready, or sleeping and dead, whatever, okay? And then we get a real picture of, okay, this is this planet's capacity to produce. And at that point, we're done analyzing the planet as a producer. In the previous video, I talked about how planets are producers. They're producers and causers. So they're going to produce and cause all the good and bad events in your life. And after step four, now after seeing that the planet's awake or ready, or not, after seeing the age of the planet, how vital it is with that age, after seeing how it feels about what its responsibilities are, its mood, while it does the thing it's going to do, and as we see the help and hindrance it gets from its friends and enemies, at that point we see what that planet is going to concretely produce. That's what it's causing and producing. End of story. Okay? Of course, exactly what it is is based on the Baba's influences. But now we see its ability to produce or cause, how high or low that ability is. Then the planet has a final step, and that's the step in as a graha, or a Caesar. Now the planet's going to grab your consciousness and ensure that you reap the fruits of your karmas, the fruits of the planets as producers and causers. And it's going to seize everybody differently, to a different degree, in a different way, at different times. So, Jupiter in your chart might seize you in a particular way in Jupiter Dasha, but in Saturn Dasha, Jupiter will seize you in a different way. And in Mercury Dasha, it'll seize you in a different way. Which means, it'll shift your consciousness to cause you to behave in a way that ensures the event in a different way. So every time, every time you've got Jupiter enter Dasha in a Dasha, Every time, Jupiter is going to seize your mind in a different way. Isn't that cool? And that's why you say, oh, I've changed so much. You have. Because Jupiter in every dasha and every other planet in every dasha is going to seize your mind in a different way. Pretty amazingly profound, isn't it? And it's going to seize your mind to produce 
what the planets are producing and causing. To put you in the right mental state to have that thing happen. To make you a big fool that does that stupid thing you shouldn't have. To make you approach things with wisdom so you get that wonderful thing. You know, whatever. To make you, your consciousness ready to make that happen. It seizes your mind and heart to ensure the connection. And when it seizes your mind and heart, the Graha creates a magnetic force within you upon having your mind and heart seized that attracts the event of that planet. But it'll, like I said, it'll seize at your mind and heart in different ways every dasha. Okay? And it's because of that that the planets are seizers or grabbers. They seize your mind. They're Grahas, like grab. They grab or seize your mind. Okay? Um, and that's why the way to change fate is to have our minds seized by other things so we can resist the seizure of the planet. Okay? It takes a high level of evolution to do that. But that's the reason yoga masters, spiritual masters, if they choose to, can. Because they don't have to be seized because their mind is fully seized by God. Okay? But until you're at that point, the plants are going to seize your mind and make your consciousness receptive to the event that's happening. To create that magnetism within your mind and heart that attracts the event produced by the planets. And that could be a great event or a negative event. It depends on the, what planet is producing it and if it's a destructive or supportive planet. Now the cool thing is when your mind gets seized, say you're born at the exact second at the same hospital with, the, with another person. Say two kids were born exactly at the same time. They hit the ground right at the same time on the exact seconds. They had their first breath right at the same time on the exact second. At the same hospital, in the same room. So like charts are this same. They're still going to have different lives. Okay? Why do they have different lives? Because each individual, as an individual, has their mind seized to a little, a medium, or large degree by all the planets. And so, in one dasha, Jupiter might seize your mind fully, but in another dasha, Jupiter might seize your mind just partially. And in another dasha, Jupiter might seize your mind so negligibly, the events don't really even occur. Okay? So, the final condition we have to look at is the condition of how and to what degree the planet is seizing your mind. The greater it seizes it, the more effects you're going to have, the more the planet is going to produce and cause for good and ill. The less it seizes it, the less the planet is going to produce for good or ill and cause in your life. Okay? And that is done through the all mysterious Shayanadi Avashtas, which are the most individualized Avashtas, because they actually take into account your name. The first letter of your first name is what lets us determine how powerfully a planet will seize your mind. Okay, because that's, your consciousness revolves around that name. Okay, your consciousness is mirrored in your name. So how the planets can seize your consciousness is dependent upon your first name. Pretty cool, huh? So this is a whole nother level of astrology that's often ignored. And without which, sometimes we might predict more than happens for good or bad. We say, oh, it's going to be really bad, but the person's mind and heart aren't seized fully, it won't be that extreme. Okay? So this is a whole nother level of, of predictions. And those are the five conditions a planet looks, a Parshar looks at. The age, the awake and ready state, or the consciousness, how the graha feels, its experience in its field. If it's, is it stressed where it's at or not? So someone who's born in the desert and hardy in the desert feels comfortable working all day in the desert. Or someone who came from the North Pole and all of a sudden they're working in the desert, mining for gold or mining for diamonds in the desert in the Sahara somewhere. Sure, they might find just as many diamonds, but they're going to be a lot more miserable looking for those diamonds than the guy who grew up in a desert who feels totally at home there. Okay? But if now they go and they start digging for oil in Alaska, the guy who was born and raised in the North Pole is having a great time up in Alaska where the guy who was born in the desert is going, gosh, when is winter going to end? Okay? Though they both might find the same amount of oil. So we have to consider that too. 
then most importantly is the help or hindrance a planet gets by its friends or enemies. And now we've got the result. The last step is seeing how strongly and in which way the person's mind is going to be seized. And there's 12 different ways that a person's mind can be seized. You can be seized that you're just so eager for something, for instance. Or your mind can be seized in a way that you just go to sleep. And so it just kind of happens and rudely wakes you up. Okay? So your mind gets seized in a way that ensures the event. So let's say your planet's indicating an accident. And the way your mind is getting seized is with eagerness. So you're really eager to get somewhere, so you jump on your car and you're driving away and you're sort of reckless and you crash your car. Okay? So that eagerness ensured the auto accident that was indicated by the planet. The eagerness is just how the planet sees your mind to ensure that accident. Okay? But you might just be driving down the car and driving your car down the road and fall asleep. So the graha sees your mind so you fall asleep and have the accident. Okay, or you might be driving down the road and forget something and have to turn around. And as you're turning around, you get smashed by a semi because you were not paying attention when you turned around. So they seize your mind to have to go back and turn around. And that's what caused the accident. You'll say, if I only hadn't have turned around, or if I only hadn't have gone to sleep, or if I just hadn't been so eager to get there, I wouldn't have had the accident. You see? So whenever we say that, we're talking about how the planet seized your mind. Okay? Um, whether something good or bad happens, you know, we'll say, I was this way, and it's because of that, this happened. That's how the planet seized your mind. Or, when something bad happens, if only I hadn't have been so eager, I wouldn't have gotten the accident. But then you go and you, to the job interview, and you're so eager, and you don't have as much experience, but you're so eager for the job, the guy goes, you know, I see you don't have as much experience, but you're just so eager to get this job, I'm going to give it to you anyway. And you say, gosh, because I was so eager, I got the job. So and that's exactly the kind of conditions that the, you know, the words, the key words that Parashar gives us for when a planet grabs your mind, grabs your consciousness, um, seizes your mind and heart, and gives you an attitude and nature that ensures that the man event manifests. Okay? So that's what we're going to cover in this, in this course. It's going to be a lengthy course. It's called the Parashara's Formula for Judging Bhavas. And the formula is these five avashtas being applied to the bhavas in a very step-by-step -step and technical and even mathematical way. Because say you've got a planet and he has a friend influencing him and an enemy. Does that make him neutral? Like just so-so? No. How strong is the influence of the friend? How strong is the influence of the enemy? Is he awake? Is he sleeping? Is he old? All those things are mathematical factors that we have to examine in order to quantify the planet and say, okay, it ends up being a productive planet, even though it has two enemies influencing it, because those two enemies are, are old, whereas this planet itself is awake and ready and young. So he can fight off those two old enemies and still do something. Sure, he'll be held back sometimes by those enemies, but he'll still succeed to this degree. Okay? Those are the level of predictions we're going to work with. So this is a serious class for serious astrologers um, that you can find at astrologyvideos.com. Okay, thank you.